Sajita, shall, shall I start? You can start. Good evening, participants. Uh, I welcome you on the digital platform Shri Connect. So today we have a webinar on the topic of female infertility. And with us uh, today, we have an eminent speaker, Dr. Gaurav Shete from Mumbai. So before we start the webinar, let me give a, a little intro about our digital platform, She Connect. So uh, you can log in uh, through Chrome on uh, shieldconnect.in where you can find out our page where you can see various sections uh, in this page. Uh, the first section is the blog section where you can find all the blogs written by the eminent speakers and doctors on various topics like PCOS, even uh, the recent topics of uh, COVID like black fungus. Then there is another section webinar on webinar section, when you click on the upcoming webinars, you can find all the uh, upcoming webinars uh, in the detail, like uh, who is going to take it and uh, at what uh, uh, it's going to be start. So this is the calendar. So when you click on the topic, you'll be able to enter into the uh, topic. And this is our speaker. So you can also check the detail of our speaker. Then there is another page awareness section where you can find two pages, immune booster and PCOS awareness. In uh, immune booster page, you will find our the introduced product, Rudimin Mu, uh, which is like a respiratory immune booster in this COVID situation. Then there is a PCOS awareness page where you can find all the videos regarding PCOS by various doctors uh in uh, various uh, language like tamil hindu hindi sorry malayalam telugu english then uh, there is a page our leader where you can find all the key opinion leaders like uh, all the speakers who are connected with our shield connect page then there is a uh, one more special page where you can find all these special day related pages uh, like the uh, hypertension day so when you click on hypertension day you will find all the details regarding the hypertension so this is our page and let me now introduce, introduce our uh, eminent speaker for today. So uh, today's topic is uh, female infertility and Dr. Gaurav Shetty will uh, take this uh, webinar. Sir is a gynecologist and obstetrician in Amea Feto Maternal Medicine Clinic in Mumbai. So sir, we are very happy to welcome you on this uh, page, Shield Connect. And uh, I will hand over you this uh, session. And uh, participants, uh, you can also uh, post your queries in the comment section. So at the end of the section, we can have a Q&A session. Uh, sir, uh, I welcome you all to the Shield Connect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nishan, for the warm welcome. Uh, so we'll start with today's topic, which is pretty interesting. It's about female infertility. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, so today's topic is female infertility. Being a gynecologist, uh, it is, uh, I can say that this is a uh, recent disease which has come up and uh, it needs to be addressed uh, by a gynecologist somewhere or the, uh, the day of his practice. So we'll start with today's discussion about female infertility, the causes of infertility, what are the reasons behind it, okay, how to treat, what are the different protocols or the different drugs that have come in market or the recent advances. All right. So first of all, let's go with the definition. So definition of infertility is that uh, infertility is inability to achieve pregnancy after 12 uh, months of unprotected regular intercourse. The definition itself uh, is self-explanatory, but when you tell the patient, so a lot of time what happens is the, uh, the couple, infertile couple, they're married for say two years, but they have been, uh, they, they don't want pregnancy for first few months, at least or for probably a year or two, because probably the financial situation or what they have planned, uh, okay, because of that, they their married life might be of three or four years, but then active sexual life might be just one year or six months or even probably less than that. So married life and an active sexual uh, intercourse uh, is different. 
So you have to ask the married couple at the time that, you know, when have you started having a regular intercourse and since when have you actually started planning the babies? Because most of the time, the patients, they come to you saying that, okay, okay, we have a family pressure. We have been married for five years and for first three years of our life, we were concentrating on our careers or our studies or we are not staying together. My husband was staying abroad for his work. And now that he has come back and now, you know, the family says that, okay, for five years, you have not uh, had a kid. So you should have a kid now. But they have not been staying together for so much time. So you have to tell them that you have to wait for one year. You have to have a regular intercourse on a timely interval okay, for one year. And then if you're not able to conceive, then you fall into the definition of infertility. So there are two types of infertilities, primary and secondary. Primary infertility is that never had even one conception up till now. While the secondary infertility uh, is like if they have had a previous conception, whether life or not, uh, uh, food, food, uh, conception, they must have had at least once being pregnant. All right. So next, uh, we'll go on the physiology of female reproductive system. <laughs> so uh, we call it HPO axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, ovarian axis. Uh, all uh, so the hormones, GnRH hormone is released from the hypothalamus. Okay. Then it acts on the pituitary anterior pituitary, which secretes FSH and LH, then which acts on the ovary to secrete androgens, estradiol and progesterone. Now, um, we'll talk a little bit about the social aspect of uh, infertility. Nowadays, there is a socio-economical aspect of infertility. In earlier ages, like you would have seen like your parents or grandparents or you know, a generation before us, uh, that the infertility was not so much of an issue because they used to get married a little earlier. Okay, uh, they used to start their family a little earlier. So the marriage marriage age used to be somewhere around 22 to 26, 27. Okay, and they used to have the first kid before 28 years. Now what happens is due to uh, say the competition, uh, that is what. Uh, the females are more uh, enthusiastic and they are more career oriented. So they want to get married later. They want to establish themselves as a professional force, you know, just complete their studies and then start with the family after they are established their career. So they start, they get married at age of 28 to 30. Okay. And after 30, they want to spend one or two years with their uh, spouses. And after two years, they want to start planning for their pregnancies. So in this, what happens is they start planning for the pregnancies at the age of, say, 32 years. Because of this, we have seen that the fertility rate, actually the physiological fertility rate decreases after the age of 32. Okay? Nowadays, we say that it is 30 almost. And after that, your uh, because of your lifestyle and all, it, you know, uh, the fertility rate further decreases. Okay. Fertility rate decreases as well as the spontaneous abortion chances and risk of uh, spontaneous abortion rates will increase. A female, uh, as you say, there are limited number of oocytes. Okay, in a female, there are normally four hundred normal eggs. So she ovulates four hundred times from her menopause to menarche, and there are finite number of uh, eggs. So. At the earliest, like from the menarche till the age of 30, say 28, the good quality of eggs are produced. After that, the quality of eggs start reducing. So the uh, eggs which are produced after, say, age of 32, 35, the quality of the, they're more immature, they, are, uh, they have some chromosomal defects and they can lead to spontaneous abortion. So that's why when you see the age advances, the spontaneous abortion, the risk of spontaneous abortion also increases. So the factors affecting the infertility. So first of all, you have age of both the partners. Like we discussed, duration or infertility. Like we discussed, like you know, the infertility is for one year, two years, three years. How much uh, have they tried before? Uh, how what was about the sexual active life? Okay. Then prior treatment and failure. What all uh, treatment have they gone under? Uh, most of the times, the people, the patients who stay uh, in a remote areas, they usually uh, go for some Ayurvedic or homeopathic treatment. And then they consider themselves that they're not been, uh, they have been taking treatment for such a long time and still they have not conceived. But for a gynecologist, when we uh, see the patient, they have not been actively treated like, you know, with folic acid or say they have not gone under ovulation induction or, you know, controlled ovarian hyperstimulation. Those things have not been done. Okay. And then the, what is the cause of infertility? The most important part is the cause of infertility. All right. So what happens is, first of all, it causes a social Patients who come for uh, uh, to a doctor, you should, uh, a practitioner, uh, OBGY, or infertility specialist, should always realize that the 
the couple who is coming to you for infertility okay he has gone through a, he has gone through a lot of depression okay he has got to some mental stress okay uh, for probably it might be the parents it might be the other spouse it it might be the peer pressure you know they go into a psych- it's not only a disease which affects uh, the body system it's also affecting the mind of the patient so what happens is uh, the patient of infertility suffers from embarrassment you know they, they don't like to come and uh, come out and easily tell about this active sexual life they don't like to tell that okay we are trying but we are not able to have a uh, 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 proper sexual intercourse because of probably erectile dysfunction in the husband or loss of libido in the female okay so these things are pretty personal so we need to as a uh, as an obg as an infertility specialist we need to give them time Okay, that is more important. We have to address the time. We have to tell them, okay, this is it's common. It's okay to discuss this, and uh, they should not feel uh, that this is a hostile environment. You should make them feel a little better. You need to make them calm down. You have to tell them this is normal, and there is a positive uh, role for them ahead. So they uh, suffer from embarrassment and depression. Then they try uh, hard to conceive, but then they put the pressure on themselves. Then anxiety happen. Okay. Then there is performance anxiety and uh, premature ejaculations. Okay. Then for uh, this this cycle, this is a vicious cycle. Okay. After uh, say taking one or two treatment, they feel it's a failure. For for fertility treatment, it's it's not like a taking a tablet for hypertension. You take a tablet for hypertension. Yes, after after a, a certain amount of time, your BP goes down and. you know the uh, same thing with your cholesterol or any other disease you know you take medicines and you get better you have to tell your patients that this is not the same with the case of infertility okay it is going to take time you to you are supposed not supposed to let your morale down okay it is going to take time but yes okay there is a possibility there is a good chance that if you follow the treatment protocol and if you go it the right way there is a good chance of you to conceive but uh, a positive reinforcement for this patients is very essential next what are the causes of female infertility so uh, if you look at the female female genital tract which we all know there are ovarian causes there are tubal causes there are uterine causes the cervical vaginal and there are something called as in unexplained infertility which nowadays amounts to almost 20 to 30 percent nowadays okay now uh, uh, we'll see what is the co- most common causes of female infertility so when you go to the cervical factor there can be chronic cervicitis uh, there can be immunological factors which can be anti sperm antibodies and all okay then there can be some uterine factors some fibroids some uh, adenomyosis some syncytiae some congenital malformations like septums polyps which can it might be hindering with implantation okay there can be unfavorable uh, endometrium next is ovaries so now for ovaries there can be disovulatory disorders and unovulation there can be pcos there can be resistant ovary syndrome okay then there can be something called as tubal factors the patients who have had a tuberculosis before or a, you know or cox they can present with a genital tuberculosis in such cases or even a pelvic inflammatory disease they cause a disruption of the tubal uh, membranes okay so tubal cilia are dis- uh, disrupted even in the cases of endometriosis okay when there is retrograde spill of blood from the fallopian tubes to the ovary there is a tissue there are uh, tissues which get attached to the inner lining of the fallopian tube and which causes uh, blockage of the fallopian tubes all right then what are the other factors responsible there can be diabetes mellitus uh, thyroid hormones thyroid disorders adrenal diseases uh, significant kidney and liver diseases and also also psychological factors hypothalamus pituitary factor so now which we say okay, hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis so you know what are the hypothalamus pituitary factors hypothalamus pituitary factors can be uh, either congenital or they can be acquired okay so in congenital uh, it can be colman syndrome there can be emptatalis uh, celatolisica syndrome okay there can be uh, hyperprolactinemia okay they can be acquired now acquired are usually stress induced or excessive food eating or excessive biting or it can be exercise excessive exercises you know leading to anorexia nervosa so this causes a negative impact on the hypothalamus because of which there is hyposecretion of gnrh all right so during the first visit okay what what are the factors that a uh, infertility specialist should look into okay so first of all at least for the first visit i would say both the partners have to come usually we have seen uh, in our at least in our in my practice i have seen that the females are 
uh, they openly come and they talk about the problem but the males are little hesitant okay to talk about infertility to talk about premature ejaculation their um, erectile dysfunction they feel a little bit of uh, uh, they don't feel good to talk about all this okay so we have to address to them that that's why the counseling part is very necessary so um, both the uh, husband and wife they do have to come to the uh, clinic for the first visit at least then you have to take the complete history of the patients okay so how long have they been married okay what is the job of the husband okay if he like if there is a standing job if he has been working in a hot and dry environment if he is being you know, is he a, a, a drilling uh, is he working in some environment where there is a lot of vibrations okay these all can impact the testosterone and the uh, uh, secretion of sperm from the testes okay you have to ask a complete history about their work as well then a sexual history you have to ask them you have to make them comfortable you have to tell them that there are few questions we can ask you which might make you uncomfortable but you need to answer them okay feel comfortable feel relaxed to tell them whenever you feel like but then these are the question which would give which will give you a little bit of brief idea about their uh, pattern okay probably they are not having uh, intercourse at the right time okay probably uh, like we know that after uh, lh search the ovulation occurs and at that time uh, having a sexual intercourse is important okay before that and after that it's not very significant sometimes the timing they, most of the people that like what have we have found at our hospital is no, a lot of people they are not aware of the timing so you need to tell them you okay, need to have a timely sexual intercourse you know it's not only about having sexual intercourse okay then this this amounts to education and counseling you have to tell them ki you uh, these are the various factors okay which can cause infertility you have to get the semen semen analysis done of the husband and if there is any problem so first of all males they if they they are first of all reluctant to get the semen analysis done they feel uh, embarrassment towards it and even if the report is not good then they further uh, they feel bad that okay you know, there is no problem in my wife and i am the uh, reason for this uh infertility uh, so the little bit of more embarrassment is so you have to tell them ki no like you know there are procedures like iui and there is another procedure called as ivf okay in which your sperms can lead to a good pregnancy you have to positively reinforce them plus uh, during this lockdown uh, like as everyone knows this lockdown has caused a tremendous stress on uh, the uh, owners of the family uh so because of that both males and female both to, today both the husband and wife are under tremendous stress you have to try to tell them that when uh, when you come back from home leave your job at okay at at your workplace okay don't bring that tension and that stress back home okay you need to start enjoying the sexual active life you cannot bring that stress home okay and uh, that is going to lead to the negative uh, sexual act, uh, acts okay next so uh this is what we have covered then yes the important part is we have to tell them about the uh, nature of therapy that we are going to plan action of the therapy that first we are going to do this then this and then final step is going to be this we have to tell them about the cause of therapy okay nowadays considering uh, the pandemic and the lockdowns and the financial burden of the patient we have to tell them about the cause of therapy they should know what procedure costs how much that is very essential for the people today and other treatment options that are available so uh, more, more importantly the couples are motivated not to change consultants regularly so if you are able to connect with the patients if you are able to connect with the couple okay they will not like to change the gynecologist that often because okay, they have come to you they have openly told you about their family problems their uh, sexual problems and everything they will not like to go and tell this again to some another part so if you if you counsel them properly if they gain your confidence okay the patient will obviously come back to you again okay then you have to keep on tell, telling them about keeping a healthy and positive attitude okay so there are something called as lifestyle modification so in pcos there is uh, more uh, we have seen more than the medication even the lifestyle modification plays an important role so first thing is uh, due to uh, lockdown and all pe uh, people who used to usually often hit gym or go running or used to be little health conscious because of sitting at home they have started putting on weight and as we know obesity in male and female both they causes infertility problems so you have to advise them for a 
weight loss exercises. Okay, you have to start telling them even if you're not able to go out because of lockdown, what you can do by sitting at home. You can do. Uh, uh, you can just follow some YouTube uh, videos. There's plenty of YouTube channels which give you health exercises and health devices and tips. And uh, you have to just keep on telling them about you know doing exercises at least half an hour, at least in the morning, half an hour to one hour, and you. Uh, exercises uh, should cause at least 50 to 80 percent of your oxygen consumption and 60 to 90 percent of your maximum heart rate so that is that should be the target okay then something about, about the diet you have to counsel them that uh, the patient who are specifically obese okay you have to ask them to reduce their um, consumption of calories by almost 600 kilocalories per day Okay, then they have to improve on the carbohydrate. They have to improve on the diet by reducing the carbohydrates diet, having a low glycemic index uh, diet, and having monounsaturated fatty acids instead of fatty acids. Okay, and increase protein in the diet. So this will help in reducing the weight, and along with exercises, this is going to help the weight loss even further. Then there's something called as behavioral modification. Okay, now because of stress and all you have to tell them, you have to start meditation. Okay, you have to have uh, pranayama, yogasana, meditation will help you behavioral modification. You have to quit smoking, quit drinking. Okay, have a proper regularly timed sleep. Okay, have a healthy diet. Okay, and um, weight reduction. Uh, there are a lot of group sessions. Okay, so... Uh, the PCOS patients, the patients who are suffering from excessive weight gain, they can join these group sessions where all other, they, they, they come across a lot of other people, uh, patients who are going through the same. Nowadays, these are online as well. So they can just go online through this and they can have a word. Uh, they can uh, hear the problems of other people they are facing in this uh, pandemic. And because of that, they, they have put on weight. So the group sessions also help. So uh, now we'll start with the management part. How do you manage the ovarian causes? So now um, the, the most important cause is anovulation. Okay? So anovulation is uh, defined uh, in basically it's been categorized into three uh, classes, class one, class two, class three by WHO. So class one is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Okay, so there is low FSH, low H, LH, and that's why there is low uh, estradiol. Then there is class two. <clears throat> There is normal gonadotrophic normal gonadism in which uh, FSH and LH ratio is changed, though they are in the uh, the levels are in the normal uh, limit, but the ratio is altered. They usually two is to one or three is to one, and uh, which can lead, which is a basic cause of PCOS. And that last three is hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism. The FSH and LH are markedly raised, but there is normal or less easy estradiol. So the first class, there is a problem in the HP axis, the hypothalamic pituitary axis, so that's called a central defect. So it can be, uh, like we discussed, it can be acquired or congenital. Second is PCOS, the, the defect lies in the pituitary ovarian axis. And class three is basically premature ovarian failure, okay, or premature ovarian insufficiency. And in, in such cases, the FSH is markedly raised, like more than 40 international units, or uh, on one occasion, or we say more than, in cases of two, uh, more than 25 on two occasions. All right. So uh, this gives, uh, and there is something called hyper, hyperprolactinemia, which causes, uh, again, anovulation. So increase in prolactin causes decrease in GNR, decrease in FSH, and the treatment is bromocryptin. For uh, class two, for class three, uh, you have to go for uh, a donor egg because if there is a premature ovarian failure or um, the AMH is low, the quality of eggs is poor, the age of the patient is uh, more than 35. Okay, so you have to go for a donor egg IVF. Okay, then for class two, ov ovulation induction for PCS patient, ovulation induction with clomiphene citrate or with letrozole is good enough. Or after that, we can go for IVF. For class 1 patients with uh, central defect, we can go for GNRH uh, and, uh, treatment with uh, followed by ovulation induction. Okay, And the next step would be IVF again. So drug, uh, drugs which are commonly used in ovulation induction. So the factors for first, other than drugs, we'll look under the factors. Okay, So first is body mass index, PMI. Then the cycle history. Okay, whether the cycles were regular, irregular, Okay, or whether uh, the history of anovulation basically. Then the resistance to previous cycles, like uh, in cases of whether the patient had a resistance to chromophen citrate. Okay. 
then uh, serum amh and antral follicle count so in case when serum amh is high okay then there is uh, it is inversely proportional to fsh sensitivity and next to is age of the patient so the, now we'll talk about the drugs. So drugs is clomiphene citrate, aromatase inhibitors uh, like letrozole and anestrozole, then gonadotrophin, HMG, HCG, and RFSH. And there are a few drugs which felicitate the induction, which will be ins insulin sensitizers like metformin and pioglutide. Then now we'll talk about the most commonly used uh, drug that is clomiphene citrate. Now clomiphene citrate is a SOM, selective estrogen receptor modulator. Now, uh, what is the mechanism of action? The mechanism of action of clomiphene citrate is basically it, uh, uh, it, it blocks it blocks the HP axis. Okay, uh, it has a similar um, uh, it has a similar effect on the hypothalamic pituitary axis, but it just blocks uh, the hypothalamic pituitary axis. The receptors sit on the HP axis. And the, the raise, rise in estrogen level is not detected by HP axis because of which the pituitary falsely uh, predicts that uh, there is uh, estrogen is low and it starts secreting more and more FSH. Now, because of this, okay, uh, there is also the side effect. Because of this, the side effect is uh, it also uh, down regulate the estrogen receptors in the endometrium. So, usually chronically seen, what we see is uh, in clomiphene citrate cycles. There is down regulation of estrogen uh, receptors in the endometrium because of which you have to give estrogen feed, uh, feedback to the patients for improvement of the estro for improvement of the endometrium. All right, so uh, it is usually given for WHO class two, the traditional drug of choice. Okay, so uh, this is the mechanism of action that I uh, explained. This is a graphic representation. All right. So, um, uh, clomiphene citrate basically causes increase in the number of follicles. So, uh, because there is a continuous supply of FSH, there will be more and more production of the follicles. The developing follicles will be more. And there can be multiple pregnancies. So, now this is again a side effect. Okay, There can be chances of multiple pregnancy and there can be chances of OHSS, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So, uh, what, is, what is how how do you start the treatment? So, for the treatment, what we can do is, you can start at 50 mg. So, doses is 50 mg. Start it for four or five days. So, either you start on day two or day three, and continue till day six or day seven of the cycle. And um, if there is over, if you see uh, that you go always the four cycles are are supposed to be monitored by a transvaginal sonography. Uh, if you see that follicles uh, are developing, you have to regularly monitor them every three to four days. Okay, and if if need be, uh, if there is a need, you can you will have or you might also have to give uh, gonadotrophins for, to increase the size for the more. All right, so start with uh, 50 mg, see how it is working. If this doesn't work for the next cycle, we have to increase the dose to 100 mg. Okay, and again check. Sometimes you have to also go up to 150 mg. If the if the patient is still not responding, you have to note, uh, you have to understand that the, that this might be a case of ovarian uh, clomiphene resistance, which is seen in 20 to 25 percent cases. Okay, so like I said, there is an anti-estrogenic action of uh, clomiphene citrate because of which you might have to supplement with estrogen to the patient. So cervix becomes uh, the cervical mucus become thinner and less favorable for the sperms, and uh, there is less chances of implantation of the embryo. So what can be done for the clomiphene citrate resistance? It, uh, usually, when uh, we see that the patient's DHEA and testosterone scores are also high, uh, then you can uh, supplement it with glucocorticoids uh, like prednisolone 5 mg per day or dexamethasone for 0 0.5 mg. 2 2 mg daily for at least the follicular phase of the cycle. Second thing, you can, uh, if the patient is obese and uh, is pre diabetic and the insulin uh, is borderline or, uh, and patient shows the signs of insulin resistance, you can add metformin okay, or myoinositolin also. So uh, sometimes what happens is nowadays, now they have come up with LH kits, urinary LH kits. So, uh, in the in the cases in the low low setting where there is uh, sonography is not uh, 
not easily available say in the phcs or you know, uh, rural areas so in such cases lh kits can be used it is first of all the advantage there are few advantages uh, so advantages is it's cost effective it, and home monitoring is also possible the disadvantages are quite few first of all it is uh, there are false negative uh, false positive rates are pretty high then there is lh lh does, doesn't always uh, uh, lead to ovulation you have to know that and specifically in cases of pcos uh, it is seen that lh surge doesn't always lead to uh, ovulation then uh, pcos patients are better monitored with uh, follicular monitoring because in the cases of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome you might have to terminate the cycles all right <laughs> So, uh, clomiphene citrate in met, uh, clomiphene citrate with metformin, like we discussed, for insulin resistance, and uh, clomiphene citrate with HMG. So, you get clomiphene citrate for first five days. After that, if you see that the follicles are not developing up to the pace, you can add HMG. Okay. Uh, or nowadays, a recombinant deficit has also uh, been available in the market. Depending on the patient's affordability, we can prescribe them either. So, <clears throat> now the rules of gonadotrophins. HMG human menopausal gonadotrophin contains both FSH and LH. Nowadays, our recommended uh, uh, FSH has come into market. So dosage uh, dosage are fifty to seventy five uh, to one fifty uh, uh, can be given depending on the number of follicles developed. The target usually is a mono follicular development. Usually, one follicle. Uh, 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 mono follicular development is a uh, protocol nowadays, but what they say is uh, more than 14 on the day 7 or day 10 if there is more than 40 uh, uh, two to three follicles and they're uh, all more than 40 then you might have to terminate the cycle or you have to explain the patient that there can be a chance of ovarian hyperstimulation you can also monitor the variable uh, the number of follicles by doing serum estrogen level estradiol levels so one follicle that is said took from 200 to 250 uh, uh, nanograms per ml is the quantity secreted by one follicle so if it is 500 you should know there are two if more uh, 750 it is three people uh, the guidelines say that if it is more than thousand you have to be cautious and you have you might have to terminate the cycles as well all right so uh, for trigger now hcg uh, human coronagonadotrophin basically it is um, structurally similar to f uh, for lh so you uh, and the day of uh, ovulation when the follicles have reached the target size 18 uh, to 22 uh, mm then you can give a trigger for ovulation you have to tell the patient that there can be middle small there can be pain okay and uh, you have to, if there are more than three follicles you have to tell them to be cautious about ohs another drug which has come up nowadays which can be used is luprotide acid the gnrh agonist now, the advantage of GNRH agonist in such cases is basically uh, it prevents OHSs. Okay? Uh, the, now, what happens is when you give uh, HCG, okay, it acts only uh, as an LH. Okay? But while giving luprotyl acetate, you block the receptors and uh, cause a natural cycle. Okay? It mimics a natural cycle and secretes FSH and LH both. The recent studies state that, that FSH is also needed at the time of ovulation at the last moment because it causes maturity of the graphene follicle. Then it causes increase in LH list receptors and it promotes oocyte maturation okay, and a nuclear maturation of the oocyte. So uh, another, another few advantages are it trigger uh, the tri the trigger is within 24 to 36 hours. Like uh, for uh, clomiphene, uh, for HCG, it is usually, uh, we say, from 24 to 48 hours. For this thing, it is less. Okay, The amount of uh, FSH and LH that is released okay, from pituitary, the quantity is less. It's optimal, but it is less. So there is, there is less chances of OHSS again. And uh, usually this is combined, uh, leprazole, uh, luprolite, sorry, Luprolide uh, is combined with uh, GnRH antagonist cycles. In IVF, when we uh, give GnRH antagonists, it's usually combined with that. Okay. All right. Now, there are uh, step up and step down protocols with HMG. So, uh, baseline UHG uh, is done to you know the anterior follicle count, administer HMG 750 for, for, for three to five days. 
then major eastern level levels and uh, if need be you have to step up okay so you have first you start with the low dose then you keep on increasing the dose after d6 okay depending on the uh, uh, increase in the size of the follicle there is something called as the step down protocol as well so you give uh, a preliminary shot okay of uh, say 225 to 300 on the day one and depending on the growth of the follicles on the next day on the third day on the fourth day you decrease you you give a lesser dose okay both are fine usually most of the uh, practitioners uh, prefer start giving a step up protocol so next we talk about aromatase inhibitors so uh, as we all know androgens which are secreted okay they convert into an uh, estrogen okay then this estrogen goes uh, the levels increases and which causes uh, decrease in the secretion of fsh lh and gives negative feedback to the pituitary and then there is uh, increase uh, decrease in the fsh and lh production so what happens here is um, uh, aromatase inhibitor uh, prevents this rate limiting step okay and there is no excessive production of estrogen because there is uh, decrease in production of estrogen there is increase in production of fsh and lh okay and uh, usually now nowadays it is said that letrozole uh, in cases of pcos is a first line of act, uh, first uh, uh, line of treatment because there is a monofollicular development and there is less chances of multiple pregnancies and ohs plus because it, as it does not uh, uh, hamper the estrogen receptor there is no anti estrogenic side effect so the complication of ovulation induction like we discussed is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome it causes enlargement of the ovaries there is ascites there is abdominal distension there is severe pain okay there is oligouria the management is conservative admitting the patient ma managing the fluids giving furosemide okay and uh, the second one is multifetal gestation what are the other methods that can uh, uh, that we can tell the patient is going for uh, ovarian drilling okay so the rule of four four punctures four millimeters four millimeters four seconds and 40 watt cup okay so um, i would like to tell that what happens at our institute and how do we manage uh, uh, infertile couple so once the patient comes to us okay we try, try to take down the complete history of the patient we evaluate all the blood parameters we uh, ask the patient to go for a day to uh, fsh and lh okay which gives us uh, the whether she is a pcos or not then we go for amh serum prolactin and then thyroid profile of the patient from this after the patient comes uh, uh, with this we, if the everything is normal and if she has been trying since a long time uh, nowadays we like to go for um, video histo laparoscopy okay and uh, methylene blue test basically uh, and, uh, because now uh, this method uh, video histo laparoscopy and methylene blue, blue test is not only diagnostic but also it can solve the problems if there are minor adages if there are tubal blockages uh if there are any uh, factors cervical factors or if there are cervical stenosis all this can be addressed under anesthesia when the patient doesn't have to go through the pain which usually goes from uh, from the uh, uh, histosalpingography all right so in our cases uh, what we do is we admit the patient we get a 3d uhg done which is done at our center we get to know whether there is uh, any septum whether there is an arcuate uterus okay uh, what is the condition of the follicle uh, the ovaries whether there is polycystic ovaries and then we uh, if the patient uh, we, we tell them we tell the patients with, uh, so the line of treatment will be if everything is normal we will go for ovulation uh, ovulation induction or controlled in, co controlled uh, ovarian hyperstimulation okay and then even after that fails then we will go for uh, video histo laparoscopy diagnostic histo laparoscopy so in such cases the diagnostic we have seen at our center that if after diagnostic histo laparoscopy cases the chances of fertility increases by almost 30% because the tubes are flushed okay we get to know exact pathology of the intrauterine and extra uterine uh, surfaces okay and uh, uh, at that time the ovarian drilling can also be done if required uh, after that then the patient we tell them to go for uh, uh, ovulation induction with planned relations or ovulation induction with i uh, iui and so on if this uh, even after this the uh, three cycles doesn't work then we further recommend them for ivf all right 
so what is hypothalamic dysfunction uh, so then uh, gene address for patients with w uh, uh, who class 1 so in who class 1 the defect is in hp axis like we discussed so the pulsatile gene rh uh, therapy is given okay uh, the uh, ovary uh, the pituitary starts secreting the fsh and lh and then uh, ovulation induction can be carried out however the you have to tell the patient that gnrh therapy is a little bit expensive and depends on patient's affordability for so in ivf uh, there is something called as gn uh, gnrh down regulation for gnrh down regulation is done so that there is no untimely lh surge and completely it is we can uh, as uh, infertility specialists as doctors we can control the lh surge and timing of ovulation so now the role of gnrh antagonist it is used for short period it acts by blocking gnrh receptors at the pituitary gland but gnrh antagonist block it for a very short period the half life is pretty less so it clears the system quickly so after gnrh agonist cycle we can give trigger as gnrh agonist from antagonist uh, cycle for ovulation stimulation we can give trigger as uh, gnrh agonist it can be given intramuscular or subcutaneous cetrohelix gamma relix other uh, new preparations so now the, there is a new uh, role of n acetyl cysteine okay which has come up so, do, uh, so how does n acetyl cysteine help so n acetyl cysteine basically increases the sex hormone binding globin and uh, there is decrease in oxidative stress it decreases the excessive uh, testosterone levels and decrease in dheas and decrease in homocysteine levels these are few studies which have uh, told the uh, anti apoptotic activity of uh, an acetyl cysteine it in in improves in insulin sensitivity and thyroid levels and lipid profile of the patients all right so um, uh, it helps in long term health effects of the patients it, uh, also helps in anti uh, decreasing the oxidative stress all right so what are the other causes of an uh, anovulation uh, is luteinized unruptured follicle so micronized production hcg can be given okay there is hyperprolactinemia bromocriptine can be given given as 1.25 to 1.5 mg at bed time okay then hyperthyroidism uh, you can start with uh, uh, l thyroxin tablets uh, depending upon the uh, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism then we come to the tubal factors so tubal factors uh, can be uh, addressed uh, only during a beta histo laparoscopy so uh, the previously used method were hsg but hsg will just tell you whether the tubal blockage but um, on uh, beta hysteroscopy on laparoscopy you will come to know whether there is uh, whether the tubes are long whether tube are short whether there is any uh, tubal adhesions okay if there is hydrosulfings all these things can be addressed and can be treated at the same time so uh, if there is a proximal tu tubal occlusion selective sulf uh, sulfing uh, sulfing of tomic can be done then the radiological gu guided tubal cannulations can also be done okay uh, then microsurgical processes uh, procedures uh, they can be done but you have to tell the patients you have to tell them the right, the right things that the chances of fertility are still uh not good even after the anastomosis there is high chances of ectopic and there are high chances of failure even after that then for distal tubal occlusion fimbrioplasty uh, neo uh, neo sulfing jostomy okay all these things can be suggested but then all these procedures uh, do have a higher failure rate then the uterine factors so uh, uterine factors if uh, there is uh, uterine fibroids myomectomy can be done endometrial polyp uh, can be removed by polypectomy asherman syndrome uh, there can be uh, adhesiolysis can be done okay and to prevent adhesions you know you can give uh, certain medications like the tinogest and ocipils then uh, management of the cervical causes like cervicitis you have to uh, uh, you can also go for colposcopy to see It is, it is chronic cervicitis. It is cervical ectopy. Okay, if there is cervical, okay, the, then IUI. If there is serious cervical stenosis, you, you, you might have to go for IUI in such cases. Management of uh, immunity uh, for the against sperms. Okay, uh, condom diaphragms and barrier methods can be used. Okay, uh, some immunosuppressants like dexamethasone, uh, cyclosporins, and methotrexate can also be given. 
uh, in cases of vaginismus, uh, severe dyspareunia, uh, Fenton surgery uh, can be done. Okay, uh, serial vaginal dilators can be used in such cases. Uh, they come in different numbers, and with the use of lubricant, uh, you can suggest them. All right. So uh, another cause and commonly seen cause nowadays is endometriosis. So management uh, of endometriosis is uh, basically the, there can be a subtle endometriosis which is asymptomatic. Okay, patient may not uh, suffer from it, but uh, it doesn't have any symptoms. But when you uh, put the probe inside and you see, yes, there are a uh, lot of adhesions, probably due to PID or, or you can see endometriotic spots clearly. Okay, in symptomatic cases, yes, you can go for letrozole as a general analog. Uh, uh, if you are operating at that time, you can cauterize those spots and uh, you have to also take care of the chocolate system if there are any. You also have to uh, tell the patient that a recurrence of endometriosis is quite common and uh, the only best part is after uh, you have to expedite uh, the process of fertility. You have to expedite the process of getting her pregnant as soon as possible because either that or you have to suppress the ovaries by giving ocetal. So that doesn't solve the purpose of uh, uh, infertility, which the patient has come to you primarily for. So you have to tell the patient, sometimes you do have to tell the patient that even you have severe endometriosis for three months, you have to take ocetins, you won't be getting pregnant in that uh, period, but that is beneficial for you because of the severe endometriosis, the endometric lesions will come down and then we can start with the fertility again. So for tubal and peritoneal factors like PID, uh, uh, metronidazole and doxycycline can be given. For un unexplained uh, fertility, you can give aspirins uh, and uh, assisted ART can be tried in such cases. So the last option is IVF. So uh, intrauterine ins uh, uh, insemination, uh, uh, basically it is uh, taking the sperms, okay? and centrifugating uh, them and taking only the good quality that's from the swim up or swim down method. Okay. And after that, injecting the good quality of sperm at the time of ovulation. All right. So uh, first the semen is taken from the male partner and washed. Okay. In cases of uh, uh, self IUI, in cases of donor IUI, you have to take the sperm from the donor bank and then inject it inside after telling the couple about it. Okay, then controlled ovarian hyperstimulation is done with clomiphene citrate or letrozole and follicle size is monitored till 17 to 22 mm. And HCG or uh, like we discussed, uh, uh, GnRH agonist uh, luprolite can be given as a trigger. Then IUI is done uh, by preparing the semen via intrauterine catheter thir uh, and 30, 24 to 36 hours okay, after HCG injection. Artificial reproductive technology uh, in such cases uh, where even I, uh, IUI has failed, we usually ask the patient to go for IVF, okay, uh, GIFT and ZIFT and XC methods. So in vitro fertilization methods, there is uh, gamete intrafallopian trans, uh, transfer, there is zygote intrafallopian transfer, and uh, there is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So indications for ART will be blocked or damaged tube, the tubes are not working, there is a previous history of self-injectomy. Um, or um, severe endometriosis, okay. Then there is uh, male infertility, severe male azospermia is there, then there is uh, idiopathic infertility, immunological factors, okay, pelvic malignancies are there. So we had this case uh, at our uh, institute a couple of uh, months back. The patient, uh, the, in, the, uh, the couple came to us for infertility and after doing uh, preliminary examinations, we found out that the patient was suffer suffering from adenocarcinoma of the uterus. Uh, so, uh, and that we got to know this by our endometrial curatage and the sample sent and the came out to be positive. So it was ER receptor positive uh, adenocarcinoma of the endometrium. So in such cases, we uh, counsel the patient, we told them that yes, what we can do is we can re retrieve the, your eggs because the AMH levels were good. We stimulated the patient, we retrieved the eggs, we froze them, and now the patient is going for the treatment of uh, the ovarian uh, for the endometrial malignancy. Most likely she's going to uh, require a hysterectomy, which she has been counseled even by us and even the oncologist. And then we'll be going for a surrogate mother. Okay, we'll be doing the XC procedure and then we will be uh, looking out for a surrogate mother for the patient. So in such cases, uh, uh, 
basic thing is you have to tell the patient that even in such cases, the, a pregnancy from your own oocyte from your own embryo uh, ovary is possible. Okay. Then complications of IVF. Okay. Uh, then there is uh, multiple pregnancies. There is ectopic pregnancy. Then there is miscarriage of premature babies. Uh, low birth weight, uh, genetic defects can be more in such uh, IVF babies. You have to counsel the patient about it. So evaluation before IVF, first of all, ovarian reserve by uh, antral follicle count and AMH. The male factors, uh, you have to do uh, semen analysis for that. Uh, then various infections like chlamydial infection, uh, recurrent um, uh, subicitis, uh, HIV, HBS, HG, uh, HBV. It's CV virus, okay. Then evaluation of the uterus, okay. If the uterus is uh, 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 ready for implantation, whether there are no defects like a fibroid or septums or mal malignancies or syncytiates or adhesions, for that has to be taken care of. Nowadays, uh, endometrial scratching is done to improve the fertility rate, which uh, uh, which is said. There's few studies that suggest that endometrial scratching, uh, hysteroscopic endometrial scratching before the ovarian transfer improves the uh, implantation rates. So what is XC? It is intracytoplasmic uh, sperm injection in which uh, under, under micro manipulator, uh, ovum is held by the one syringe and the, from the another syringe, a sperm is picked up and forcefully injected inside. So you can confirm that there is fertilization. Usually, previously before XC, okay, what you used to do is keep the egg and the sperm in a petri dish and keep them into incubator. But nowadays you can confirm the, the rate of uh, fertilization go highly uh, they go up, the pregnancy rates go up because of XC. All right, so what are the indications? So there's male factor, there is severe, severe oligospermia, there's severe asthenospermia, teratospermia. So while XC, you need only one good sperm to uh, uh, inject in the ova. So even if there is severe oligospermia, asthenospermia, or teratospermia in the husband, XC is a good way for them uh, to uh, have a zygote. Okay, so then there is another other methods like GIFT and GIFT in which um, there are little invasive methods in which you have to transfer the embryo or the zygote in the fallopian tube or the uterus, which uh, have a little more of a failure rate compared to IVF. Same, zygote intrafallopian uh, intra uh, transfer ZIF. All right. So uh, this will be, uh, this was my presentation. Uh, I would like to stress again on uh, the natural methods in which uh, conception can take place. First is, first is very, first is counseling. And uh, second uh, is the, uh, lifestyle modifications. Okay. These play a uh, role way further than uh, all these other methods, IVF and XC and everything. These are there. That's true. Okay. The technology has been advanced so much and uh, we can do all these procedures. But even for them to be successful, even if the patient gets pregnant, uh, uh, to further continue with the pregnancy, patient needs to understand that some lifestyle modification, changes in diet, exercises, reduction of weight and counseling of the couple is very much required. Right. Thank you so much, sir, to give this uh, very informative topic uh, on today uh, webinar. And, sir, uh, would you like to let us know that uh, the the exercise and lifestyle modification will this help to, to uh, get the fertility chances uh, more? Yes. So uh, it is said that uh, the obese patient, even if they reduce their weight by ten percent. Okay, 10 yes. to 15 percent, the chances of fertility goes up almost by 40 percent. So, definitely, uh, exercises, weight, uh, weight reduction, proper diet, okay, decreasing carbohydrates, increasing proteins, having a healthy lifestyle, having a proper sleep cycles pattern is mm -hmm. very important and it's mandatory. And the other question is that uh, the stress level today, people are having lots of stress. So, uh, yes. The stress is uh, one of the main concern for the infer infertility nowadays. Yes. Uh, nowadays that we have seen uh, because of the lifestyle nowadays, you know, career oriented mm -hmm. lifestyle is there. Uh, yes. So because of that, both male and the female partners mm -hmm. are having uh, problems at their job and somehow they bring that back home. There is mm -hmm. conflict with, within the couple itself. Okay, then mm -hmm. there is pressure from the family, from friends that okay, you have to get pregnant. Because of this, there is a lot of stress. 
this yes. stress leads to first of all uh, behavioral changes in them they are not mm-hmm. uh, they, they take uh, when they, we need to tell them to have a planned relationship on so and so date uh, during the time mm-hmm. of ovulation okay they take it as a task okay yes. rather than uh, rather than uh, it should be more of uh, enjoyment or it should be a part of the life uh, they should enjoy they rather take it as a, mm-hmm. like what teacher has told you to do a task has to be done and has to be done that's it okay there is yeah. so that's what i counsel my patients usually that don't take it as a task it's not it's not not it's not a task yeah. you have to take it as a pleasure okay it's a part of life okay you have to try to enjoy the act you have to try to be in the act yeah. you have to be there for your partner emotionally as well okay it's not that that you have to just do with the act and get out of away, away from it that that's the thing no emotionally you have to be attached in the act you have to be emotionally involved in the mm-hmm. act so that's why we tell our patients to be okay you need to also mm-hmm. indulge indulge in the emotional conversation with your partners you need to tell them what is happening okay what usually happens is uh, you know uh, we have a patriarchal system in which the husbands they don't tell about the financial problem that are going on in the job yeah. and the wife doesn't know about it okay mm-hmm. she is more scared okay now i am in for uh, whether i am in for tell or not mother in law and uh, the family relatives everyone pressurizing her okay okay why are you getting pregnant the, mm-hmm. but on the other hand there is no communication between husband and the wife husband is not telling her about mm-hmm. the financial burden he is going through or the tension that he is having at his job and wife doesn't tell him about the constant taunts or bickering that she has been hearing from the family and relatives so they need mm-hmm. to be together as a team they need to understand that both of them are there in this together okay it's not only the husband's job uh, to earn and it's not only a wife's job to cook okay it's both it's both the way nowadays mm-hmm. so yes it is very true that the stress levels do affect the fertility it's very true okay uh, one more question is that uh, nowadays uh, now people are very broad minded so uh is there any cases that uh, female partner is uh, very well but male uh, partner is infertile in some way so do they proceed and uh, give this information that uh, this is the issue so yes we have uh, addressed this issue quite a, a lot of times uh, yes. what has happened is the male partners first of all they are very reluctant Uh, to talk about their issues okay something yes. like erectile dysfunction and mm-hmm. something like premature ejaculation and specifically yeah. when there is a female gynecologist sitting in front of them they feel a little more uncomfortable mm-hmm. like a, a female patient is more con- comfortable with a female gynecologist a male patient is more comfortable with a with male gynecologist gynecolo- gynecolo- mm-hmm. gynecolo- mm-hmm. gynecolo- so uh, they they do open up that's why counseling with the patient having a good rapport with them trying to tell them yes. that it, it is normal it's not a disease don't worry it's not a yeah. disease okay it's just a behavioral pattern that you have to change a little bit of nice mm-hmm. modification you have to change and even erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation mm-hmm. can be taken care of thank you so much for providing all this information and sir i will take a two minutes of time uh, sure. so that i can share uh, two products from our company uh, they are very helpful in the fertility process can i share yes yes please go on so these are uh, two products uh, first is the oa shield uh, which is very helpful for the fertility uh, in female uh, this will uh, help in the ovulation induction conception and implantation uh, the oa shield has the formulation of estazentin which will protect the ovaries from the ros it will also improve the conception and implantation while the n n acetylcysteine as you mentioned sir that uh, it also overcomes the anti estrogenic effect of the clomiphene and will help the sperm uh, mucus penetration while both will overcome the ros damage uh, to the oocyte in follicular fluid and to sperm in peritoneal cavity and to embryo in the fallopian tube uh, the dose is that uh, it uh, starts with the day 2 or 3 to day 7 the oa shield one tablet a day and simultaneously the uh, the patient has to take one capsule of estazentin and continue till the last capsule so the treatment is for the female patient with the history or having the pcos uh, issue or fertility issues related to pcos the second product is for the male infertility issues uh, most probably for the uh, sperm uh, quality issues sir uh, this is the zoamet so we have a unique formulation which will uh, helpful to improve the sperm count and uh, mobility mobility 
and will improve the fertilizing ability of the sperm. It will also help the three process of the sperm, capacitization, uh, acromosomal reaction and chemotaxis. So the formulation of the zoomet uh, is uh, uh, ubiquinone, which will improve the sperm motility, L-cartinine, then lycopene, as it improves the semen parameters, estaxanthin, a powerful antioxidant, uh, L-arginine uh, sperm for the sperm development, zinc for the increased motility, selenium for development of sperm tail, and vitamin D for development of nucleus of sperm cells. So these are the two products uh, uh, from the shield which will be very helpful in the infertility issues. As uh, the topic was the related to infertility, so we shared this uh, two product with you, sir. And uh, uh, let me see if we have any further query in the comment section. One minute, sir. So there are no more uh, questions in the comment section. I thank you so much uh, to be the part of this Shield Connect uh, uh, for this webinar. And we will be very grateful to have more sessions with you, sir, yes, yes, on uh, various topics. Uh, eventually, uh, we will try to connect with you uh, ahead. And uh, I also thanks to all the participants to join for this session and my SHIELD colleague uh, Sajita and uh, all the SHIELD team member to make this uh, webinar possible with Dr. Gaurav. Thank you so thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Have a nice day. Have a nice day.